Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Indosoft Web Studio webinar for machine builders. My name is Fabio Teresino. I will be co-hosting this webinar with Orion Williams from Max School. Uh, I'll be pretty much providing a brief introduction about the typical architectures of applications used in mach uh, machine builder HMIs. Uh, talk about the advantages, uh, some unique features of Indosoft Web Studio that are especially important for HMI applications for machine, machine builders. Then I'll talk about dashboards and OEE. Uh, interfaces that could be created within the software studio for uh, to drive uh, statistical reports uh, different types of live reports from machine view from machine uh, live data and uh, I will briefly show a few case studies about real-world applications deployed within the software studio to control monitor or analyze uh, different machines uh, applications designed by system integrators and running in different uh, portions of the world. Then uh, Orion Williams will talk about a real application that he developed for Max School. He will describe the background, the situation uh, before creating the application. Then he will demonstrate the solution, the actual application, and, and share some details about uh, his implementation with us. Uh, finally, he will talk about the benefits that uh, himself as a system integrator, as a machine builder, uh, perceived with the application created within the software studio and the advantages for the end users as well. And finally, he'll talk about the future plans, what kind of new interfaces and new features they intend to implement in the future uh, using the software studio. Uh, we will then open for Q&A, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write them during the presentation or after the presentation in the Q&A box from WebEx or in the chat box from WebEx as well. And you can access those boxes uh, just by moving your mouse to the top portion of your screen and uh, the, the WebEx toolbar will give you options for the chat and for the Q&A box. Having said that, let's just get started with the typical architecture for HMI projects uh, on machine automation. So the simplest type of configuration is pretty much a local HMI running in the software studio and talking to the local controller using either a serial link or a TCP IP link or ProfBus, DeviceNet, whatever protocol is supported by the controller uh, typically a PLC. And in many cases, we have also the HMI not only collecting data from the PLC and sending set points and commands uh, back to the PLC, but also saving history data either into the local proprietary history files from Indosoft for events, alarms, and trains, or even saving data to a local or remote SQL relational database like Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Sybase, MySQL, any SQL relational database. It's uh, in using the software studio, you can very easily save any history data from the machine or uh, like process, uh, like variables or even events to either our proprietary database or an external standard SQL relational database. And then uh, some customers need more than one HMI on the same machine because either because it's a large machine or because more than one operator should be monitoring the machine at the same time. And the traditional solution would be just to replicate the original HMI in a second panel, in a se second piece of hardware. And uh, you can do that, we support this solution, so you would have two HMIs running the same application and talking to the C, uh, same PLCs at the, all the time. Uh, but in Indosoft, we support a thin client solution called Secure Viewer Thin Client, which allows you to uh, install a program in the second HMI uh, and configure the IP address 
of the primary HMI, the runtime station on the second HMI. So when you do that and you run the secure viewer on the second HMI, it connects to the main runtime and it creates a new independent instance of the graphical interface in the second HMI. So for the operator, uh, it's just like he has two independent HMIs sharing the same application. Using the secured system, you can even lock the operator on the application, even on the secure viewer thin client, and the operator cannot close the application or go to the desktop or do uh, other things in that computer, in that station. And the secure viewer thin client has full access to the main application running on the local HMI. You can impose restrictions based on username and password, uh, some screens that should not be available, but from the technology point of view, when you design an application for a standalone HMI and you run a secure viewer in a different computer, that secure viewer can access all the screens and all the interfaces, online data and history data from the first runtime station. One advantage <clears throat> is performance and traffic in the network because because only the main HMI is pulling data from the PLC and pushing data by exception to the th secure viewer thin client station. So you do not have two stations pulling the PLC all the time. Moreover, you do not have to install in the software studio in the application in two stations. You do that only on the first one. In the second one, you just type the IP address of the server and it shares the application from the first HMI. So if you have to repair the second HMI, you just uh, connect the new piece of hardware there, install Secure Viewer, type the IP address of the first HMI, and you are up and running again. You do not have to install in the software studio, you do not have to install the application on the Secure Viewer thin client. If you make changes on the application, you just have to make changes on the local HMI. The Secure Viewer Thin Client is automatically updated when you update the local HMI because it's sharing the application running on the local HMI. But the operators can operate each one of those two HMIs individually. Uh, you could open different screens on each HMI at the same time. And finally, you do not have to install the license on the Secure Viewer Thin Client. You install the license only on the local HMI and any runtime license for Indosoft supports one secure viewer thin client connected to the uh, local HMI. And if you need more than one secure viewer thin client connected at the same time to the local HMI, all you have to do is upgrade the license on the local HMI to support the number of secure viewer thin clients that should be concurrently connected to the server. So the secure viewer thin client is a very affordable and very flexible way to have uh, more than one HMIs for the same machine with no extra development effort and none or a very little uh, additional cost. Some customers go one step forward and in addition to the secure viewer thin clients or uh, even if they do not have a, a local secure viewer thin client, they enable the application to support remote web thin clients and SMA thin clients, Studio Mobile Access thin clients. So users in your local area network using a computer with Internet Explorer or even a mobile device like a tablet or a cell phone like the iPads, the Androids, the iPhones, they can connect to the local HMI and visualize tag values from the application online alarms, acknowledge alarms, and even change set points if they want to change the set points. They can even monitor online trained and history trained from the thin clients as well. The web thin client interface allows the user to access the whole application, all the screens, all the interfaces. Again, you can impose restrictions using the built-in security system from Indosoft, but from the technology point of view, all the screens, all the interfaces available on the local HMI can be visualized and used uh, from a remote web browser, Internet Explorer. And using the mobile devices, 
We have a, a solution we'll discuss in five minutes, the, the SMA thin clients, where you can monitor values, change set points, monitor online alarms, and visualize online and history trends as well. So since any runtime license from Indosoft supports one secure viewer thin client, one web thin client, and one SMA thin client concurrently connected to the server, with any runtime application, you can have this configuration for Indosoft Web Studio. And we're seeing more and more machine builders uh, requiring the, uh, the feature or the ability to consolidate data from more than one machine in a central database. And many want to do that using a virtual server in the local industry or even a virtual server on the cloud, like Rackspace or Amazon. So in Indosoft Web Studio, we have built-in tools to push data from the local HMIs to the central server, and several local HMIs could be pushing data to the same central server, which consolidates data from all the machines, and then remote web thin clients or SMA thin clients can connect to this virtual server, even through the internet, if you uh, enable that, and access online data or history data from the application from the remote thin clients. So with this configuration, you have local data on the local HMI and local secure viewer thin client for the operators to operate the, the machine. You have also uh, information available in the local area network could be a marquee, a large LCD display showing OE information, or even the supervisor checking the production information on the local area network. And you can push data from several machines to the cloud and then have remote users, uh, obviously only users with a valid username and password, monitoring information from all the machines, production, target information, list of alarms, uh, downtime, uptime, most common causes of downtime and any other information that you provide to the cloud. So using a single tool in the software studio, you can very easily, pretty much without scripts, configure the application to support all those uh, different interfaces. So let's talk briefly about some main advantages of in the software studio that allows you to create applications uh, advanced applications for uh, machine control. First of all, Indosoft Web Studio is an easy to use HMI, SCADA, MES, OE solution. So all the features you need is in a single development environment. You do not have to install, configure, and license different modules, one for trains, one for alarms, one for drivers. No, everything is integrated in a single package. And then you develop your application, you troubleshoot your application in this same environment, and then you can deploy this application on any device running a operating system supported by Microsoft, from Windows Mobile 6.5 to Windows CE, Windows Embedded, Windows XP, Windows 7, Vista, 2003 Server, 2008 Server, or 2008 R2. We have even tested in the software studio in the beta version of Windows 8. And when Windows 8 becomes available to the market, in the software studio will be fully compatible with it. So it gives you the flexibility to design the application once and deploy this application on different platforms according to the needs of each machine or each end users. So you can change the hardware platform, even the operating system platform, without having to redesign the whole application. And in addition to that, we also keep 100% of compatibility with applications created in previous versions of the product. So you see a real picture here from an application created back in 1997 for Windows C 1.0 running on the old Cassiopeia device. And we literally copied this application to a computer running Windows 7 and you see the application running there with the most uh, recent version of Windows Software Studio on Windows 7 with 100% of compatibility. So it means you are protected. You protect the investment you make 
when you design applications, when you design screens or symbols or libraries within the software studio. As the product evolves and supports new platforms, we keep supporting the applications, the objects that you created in previous versions of the product. We also uh, have interface, a very easy interface to any SQL relational database. We even have a patent for the technology that we designed. So even uh, Windows CE HMIs can save and retrieve data from any SQL relational database, including Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Sybase, MySQL, or any other relational database. So you can store history information in those databases, event history, alarm history, process data, OE data, trending data, and generate all kinds of dashboards and reports available to the local users and to the remote users as well using secure viewer thin clients, web thin clients, uh, or even some data on the SMA thin clients. And you'll see some examples here, anything from vibration analysis, Pareto charts showing the most common causes of downtime, uh, statistical reports, OE dashboards. So you can create customized dashboards, retrieving data from the databases and displaying this information on any screen. You also have a lot of flexibility to deploy the application in many different ways, uh, just like we uh, discussed on the first slide. So you d develop your application in your PC, and then either you run it locally or you download the application to an embedded device, could be a device running the PLC and the HMI on the same device, or you can download to local HMIs or even to regular PCs. You can also download the application to a virtual server on premises or a remote server on the cloud as well. And then remote stations where you do not have to install in the software studio, nor the application, nor the license, which are the thin client stations, can connect to the runtime station running in the soft and display the whole application on the web browser. Internet Explorer is the web thin client solution. On another computer where you install the secure viewer is the secure viewer thin client solution. Or even in mobile devices where you use the web browser embedded on any device from iPads, iPhones, Androids. And when you use the SMA solution, uh, you have two different interfaces that are supported by Indosoft. Devices that do not support HTML5, like old cell phones or, or uh, very simple phones with a, a, a small version of the browser, or old version of the web browser, can visualize tag values and alarms in a tabular manner uh, as those screenshots here obviously based on username and password. And if you have a device with a browser that supports HTML5, like an iPhone, an iPad, uh, iPad 1, 2, 3, uh, an Android device, a new Windows phone or Windows tablet, then you can connect to the application and navigate through different areas that you configure using a, a graphical interface Visualize tag values in real time using dashboards with widgets that you configure. Monitor online alarms and acknowledge the alarms and visualize any data in the online trend or history trend. So you can visualize that from any browser on any device as long as those browsers support the HTML5 technology. So this is the first thin client solution from Windows Software Studio, fully supported across different platforms. Connectivity is another, another strong advantage from Windows Soft. When you install the product, we install more than 240 native communication drivers for different protocols. We support virtually all the Rocco, uh, Alan Bradley PLCs, Siemens PLCs, Omron, Beckoff, G, Fanuc, uh, Modbus RTU and ASK, Modbus Plus, Modbus over TCP IP, even proprietary networks like Profbus DP, DeviceNet, ControlNet. So all those drivers are built in in the product. And in addition to the native drivers, 
We also offer the OPC DA, XML, .NET, and OPC UA built in in the product for any platform. We also have APIs like the Driver Toolkit, the Tags Database API Toolkit, Interface to Databases, and tools to exchange data between two or more stations running in the software studio or different thin clients that we have uh, discussed already in the previous slides. And the tabular SMA thin client is available in the current version of the product and the enhanced SMA thin client will be available in the software studio 7.1 uh, that will be releasing in the upcoming weeks. So now I'd like to talk about dashboards and OEE, especially because over the years in the software studio and most HMIs were used pretty much as a uh, tool for the operators to operate the machines, uh, visualize alarms, uh, turn things on and off, load recipes, uh, change set points. Uh, and obviously we have all the tools for you to create an application with all those features. However, as technology evolved and Indosoft created new features in the product, you can design the application that is used not only to operate the machine, but also to provide dashboards and information to the supervisor, to the plant manager, even to the machine manufacturers themselves, to the machine builders, uh, which allows them to analyze the behavior of the machine, uh, the production, the performance, and then take actions to improve productivity. For example, <clears throat> we have this template application for uh, business intelligence dashboards, which allows you to create dashboards in a matter of seconds or few minutes there. We will be uh, making this template available for purchase in, in, in a few weeks here, but I'd like to uh, show a preview on how this template works. So this is an application created within the software studio. And during the runtime here, I can create a new dashboard project. So I can call here webinar machine builders. So it's a new dashboard project. And then I can link my project to different databases, Microsoft Access, SQL Server, different databases. In this particular case here, I'm gonna read data from this database, from this MDB file. And now if I create a new query, Indosoft automatically shows you all the tables and even all the columns that you have in this database. And then you can select a table, add to your query, and even preview here the values from that table. Finally, you can build your dashboards on the fly just by creating here a new dashboard. You can give a name to this dashboard, like for instance, production data. Select a uh, profile, a template for your dashboard, for instance, this one. And then add charts to each one of the areas in this dashboard, for instance, here. I want to show information from this query in a pie chart using the column name for the labels and the column value for the actual values. And there you go, you see the pie chart. And if I move the mouse here, you see the values that we retrieved from this table in the database. If I click here, <clears throat> I can read data, for instance, from the same query, but now I want to see a Pareto graph, for instance, <clears throat> the most common causes of alarms or uh, downtime. And then in the soft shows the Pareto graph automatically for you. And here I can show, for instance, the raw table. And then in the soft shows the raw table for you. So using this template, which is actually a product, uh, but built is pretty much an application built within the software studio. You can create new dashboards and customize those dashboards during the runtime. And even if you want to create a report out of those dashboards, you just click, click here in report, generate the reports and visualize the data here before either saving as a PDF or sending to the printer. So all those tools are built in in this application uh, that will be made 
uh, will be made available to the Indosoft users as uh, a product itself that you can run with the standard Indosoft Web Studio. <clears throat> so, in addition to the business intelligence intelligence dashboards, we have also a OEE uh, overall equipment effectiveness demo uh, available for free from the Indosoft website. So, if you go to the Indosoft website, we have here under products OEE dashboard. And then we provide some information about OE, how the OE is calculated, uh, is actually a result of the combination of three key performance indicators, three KPIs, performance, availability, and quality. And if you click here, you can download this demo application uh, that many customers use uh, so they do not have to create a OE dashboard from the scratch. They can start with this template. So if I come here to OE demo, I can run this application on my computer. And again, this demo is available to download from the Indosoft website. And then it connects to a local database. And if I expand here, you can see OE information for the whole plant, for different lines, for different machines within the line. You can change the period of time to calculate the OE uh, data. And you see not only the uh, KPIs, availability, performance, and quality, which results in a final OE, but as well, uh, but other information as well as the total uptime, downtime, cycle speed, good units, bad units, and total units for the period of time that you select. And here on the trend, you see how the OE changes over time. So you could create uh, OE dashboards like this one that are available on the local HMI, on the web thing clients for the supervisors, for the managers, or even in a marquee on the plant floor. So you can use it to motivate the operators to achieve the target uh, goals uh, in regards to quality, performance, and availability. Uh, also, when you compare different machines, different lines, it helps managers or supervisors to pinpoint deficiencies in the process and take actions to solve them, whether it is training for uh, specific operators or to entire shifts or change of machines calibrations or change of machine pieces or even uh, modify the cost associated to different products because here you can have accurate data about the cost associated with each type of product. So the, using the dashboard templates and the OE demos, you can uh, get a starting point to create your dashboards, but all those applications were created from the scratch using all the built-in tools from Indosoft Web Studio. So you can customize your own dashboards and create your own OE reports using native tools and features from Indosoft Web Studio. <clears throat> Finally, I'd like to share some case studies with you. And back to the Indosoft website, if you go under solutions, case studies, we have dozens and dozens of case studies for different applications uh, created by uh, different system integrators. And you can read the whole case study from the website or even download it to your computer as a PDF. And I just put together here a few slides uh, to mention a few case studies from real world applications created within the software studio for machine automation. So the validator application is used to monitor data from different machines and alert the user if values deviate from expected ranges, uh, expected uh, boundaries, and they were able to improve the quality and the performance of the machines because they are able to fix issues before they uh, slow down the, the production or even create too many rejects. So the, the system is able to identify those trains uh, before they become uh, significant for the bottom line. 
Uh, in this application, uh, th this application is actually depo uh, deployed in Turkey, and they used Indo Software Studio to browse information from the from the ERP, like the job orders, and then we uh, load from the database all the information about the, the job orders and bring this information directly to the plant floor. So with this application, they were able to increase tremendously the productivity and minimize quality problems, errors during the production, because the human error was eliminated or reduced as much as possible. Uh, and this company became much more productive and according to them, uh, were able to become competitive again from the cost point of view uh, with competitors from different parts of the world, including China. So uh, the HMI in this case is used not only to operate the machine, but to improve the efficiency of this operation. In this application, Indo Software Studio is used uh, on uh, surface finishing machines. And in addition to the traditional screens to operate to monitor alarms, they also have XY uh, trained controls where they can monitor the actual values from the machine with ideal profiles and uh, analyze the deviation between the, the real data compared to the ideal profiles and then take actions to fix issues if those uh, deviations are beyond a tolerance. In this application here, designed by Graham Engineering in the Software Studio is used to monitor and control extrusion machines. Uh, and this project received a award for the most innovative HMI application of the year, if I'm not mistaken, by the Control Engineering uh, Magazine or uh, uh, and they use the soft for the HMI and the Bekoff PLC as the controller. Uh, Stock America using the soft in a food and beverage industry in this application used the tools in the software studio uh, which allows you to create applications compliant with the FDA 21 CFR part 11. So they do all types of validations, uh, electronic signature, uh, log of events from the actions taken by the user. So all the actions, all the requirements from the FDA 21 CFR part 11 are met with this application created with Indosoft Web Studio. And it is one of many. Mway uh, also has an application designed with Indosoft Web Studio exclusively to collect data from the machines about the tests, the quality uh, assurance of the products and generate all types of reports, statistical reports with the bell curve, uh, Pareto graphs, uh, histograms, so they can analyze the results from the tests uh, conducted which, with each type of product. MPI designed a excellent application. Uh, it's extremely consistent. Uh, I just have two screens here, but the real application has dozens of screens. They are very uh, consistent with each other's so the operator, uh, the, the training for the operator is very easy and, and very short. And uh, they designed the application uh, as a template. So when they have to make customizations from machine to machine, they do not have to redesign the application. It's very easy for them just to customize the content of different buttons for navigation, create new screens or change settings on screen and very quickly they can adapt this master application, this template application to different machines. With that, I would like to pass control to Orion Williams and uh, he will share uh, the experience he had with the Software Studio and demonstrate his application uh, to us. So Orion, feel free to uh, present the application whenever you are ready. All right, Fabio, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I, I'm assuming I'm coming through okay? Can you hear me all right? Yes, perfect. Okay, all right, then I'll just continue. So yeah, my name is Orion Williams. I am with Max Cool Inc. And uh, our product is the Max Cooler. Uh, Max 
stands for Modular Automated Cooling System. And uh, as you can see here, this is a representation of a max cooler, though this is uh, obviously not a real max cooler. Uh, it's an AutoCAD 3D model of a max cooler. We do have real ones uh, just for, for demonstration purposes. This uh, gives a nice uh, overview. We, uh, we were unable to rent a helicopter and a photographer for a day to get a, a real picture like this, so this actually worked out pretty well for this. Um, but yeah, so this is a this is an example of the, the Max Cooler. Uh, currently, all the Max Coolers implemented uh, in the real world have primary usage of cooling produce, uh, vegetables, and fruits, primarily a lot of berry growers. And uh, the way these work is that you load up your pallets onto the in-feed conveyors, and they go into the first of four zones. There, there are actually four internal zones to this, and the they work similar to a tarp tunnel system, the traditional cooling facility would uh, employ, but here it's all automatic. So as the product comes in, seals drop and form a tight little zone around the product. The uh, cold air, the refrigerated space inside is cold air, and it forces cold air through the product, which comes out the other side and uh, is as warm air, uh, and it's cooled again and forced through, and that cycle continues for one quarter of the total cooling time. Um, we call it a quarter cool uh, time. So uh, at the end of the four zones worth of cooling, uh, each zone actually splits the air direction, so it results in an even, evenly cooled product. So at the end of that, it spits it out uh, at your desired temperature, and that's our machine. That's, we, have, we have a cooler. So what the, we wanted to do after the, I mean, the cooler is built, the program in and it runs, and we have a physical touch screen, and it works great. But we wanted to be able to emulate the physical touch screen on this little virtual panel here. Uh, we wanted that physical touch screen to be mirrored on a PC-based HMI. And so we looked around. We had some uh, we had some other options available. There's quite a few PC-based HMI. Uh, software applications out there, and we tried one in particular, and it was very expensive, which would have been fine if it, if it did the job, uh, but there was a few things I had a problem with. Uh, it was it, it was completely modular, so it was like, oh, you want that feature? You want that feature? You got to buy this module. Oh, you like that feature? And here's the module for you. And, uh, and it, instead of nickel and diming, it was a uh, hundred of dollaring or thousands of dollaring. Uh, <laughs> at the end, we were left with a huge bill and a very complicated piece of software that uh, it was so proprietary, everything about it was so proprietary, it's hard to take your data out of it. And uh, for that, was required another module. So we started looking at alternatives and reading up and doing a little bit of research on this, so came across Indusoft Web Studio, and it seemed to offer all that we wanted and uh, the support guys were really good. They answered all my questions. I was able to call and say, can it do this? Can it do that? And uh, the answer, remarkably, was always yes. Uh, it can do that. And so, okay, uh, learning, go, going through the growing pains of the learning curve, and, uh, and now I've, I've been using Web Studio for just over four months. And so this application I've built today over here on the right is, uh, built, in, is built in about three and a half, four months. So. I'm sure it could use some improvement, but it uh, actually does the job very well. And um, I'm going to show you, this is our physical touch screen. So physical touch screen is great, but uh, it's got a very limited internal logging capacity. So if you want to store any of that data, uh, the rate that we store our data, this screen's internal capacity gives you about 10 hours of, <laughs> of logging. So not enough for most people's needs. Most people want to be able to look back for accountability purposes, the, uh, the, uh, make sure we cool the product right, the max cooler perform like it was supposed to. You want to, you want to look back uh, days, weeks, months, and the screen internally cannot do that. So we wanted something that could uh, not only function as a redundant HMI, but something that could log the data uh, and store it and be easily retrievable also. So here's a brief, this is like I said, example of the physical touch screen we've got out in the field. This on the right is the you know, Web Studio application I've built. So uh, 
we as we have these different modes of operation. And right now I'm connected over a VPN connection. So these values are not representative of, of a real max cooler, but uh, this is actually the max cooler uh, sort of symbolically top-down view with the in-feed product coming in and the out-feed product going out. If there were products inside, the photo eyes would indicate uh, pallets in there also. And that's all done dynamically through the scripting functionality of the Web Studio application. So uh, all these are adjustable and uh, yeah, and if, on the real cooler, if I, were to, if I were to press this door mode hand on the, and this were, if this were a real screen, you see, uh, well, it's already enhanced, you see, like, you go to off, and the door mode would go to off. And if I were to press the, the cooler mode uh, off here, then you'd see on the Web Studio application, the cooler would go to off. And that works because they're all addressing the same addressing, uh, the drivers in, we use Koyo DLC, the drivers in the Web Studio application uh, are synced up to the DLC, and so if you write to them from the Web Studio, the screen reads from that same address the new value. If, if you enter that new value in a screen, then the Web Studio pulls the PLC and re retrieves the new value. And it just works really well. So, uh, show you a little of the functionality I have here. If I were to hit the screen button here, a little screen menu kind of pops up here. And so, Using a little pop-up screen option on Web Studio, I've, I've emulated that functionality. So, if uh, on the physical screen you're going to say module detail, you'd see this screen, and in the Web Studio application you'd see this screen. And this is kind of a monster screen; shows quite a bit of information. I'm sure nobody else knows what they're looking at here, but uh, <laughs> it's all relevant. Uh, so, yeah, this is representative of uh, how much time is left in a quarter cool cycle and uh, the various modes of operation that the max cooler functions in, return air temperature, uh, supply air temperature off the uh, refrigerated coil, fan speed, and again, these are not real values, they're just on a, a bench test PLC, there's no max cooler attached to these, but uh, um, so these values aren't representative of anything real. It is not 23 degrees in the office uh, where this PLC is located. Uh, however, all the data here is familiar to, uh, to an operator who wants to come look at this data uh, on the PC. It's going to be very familiar because the physical touchscreen that he's used to running day in, day out uh, looks the same. So what's great about that is if for some reason, either an electrical problem or uh, the hardware just flat out fails, we've got this redundant system where our embedded PC inside the Mac cooler panel is connected to our PLC and it's logging and it's running this application all the time. And it's a headless system, there's no monitor attached, but it is on the local network, so anybody who has uh, the right credentials and local access to a computer can monitor it remotely uh, or even locally, local remote, and, and uh, dangerously enough control the Mac cooler, but uh, that's not what it's intended for. It's primarily for logging and uh, status on it. Uh, but also in the case of, as I said, hardware failure, they can use Web Studio to fully run the Max Cooler without the use of the physical touchscreen. So, just to show you again, if you hit the screen button again and select the manual fan conveyors screen, you would get this, showing the mirrored functionality, the look and feel, the alarm screen. Everyone knows a good alarm screen very useful to know that you've got a whole lot of problems going on in our bench test PLC. I'll have to look into that tomorrow. Uh, yeah. so, so the Web Studio application has been really good for us. It allows us to put quite a bit of data on there. Um, this screen shows a lot of the discrete information, some of the uh, analog information, very informative, but allows us to pack all that in. So. We can also we can script things like so if I if I've got a photo eye here and the photo eye is blocked, uh, it says block. And if it clears, I dynamically script through the uh, through the object caption there. I say uh, the, oh now it's clear. So it's got a number of instances where you things like that. Uh, we, we use the scripting to indicate if something is is calling attention. Like for example, these are these doors are open. That's a problem. That's that's access to the fan. You don't want that open. Or just 
just anyone to be browsing by these huge fans. So it flashes. That's a problem. Good, good eye catching thing. So scripting allows us to do that. Uh, even so much as uh, to do password protection, uh, if you want to access the maintenance screen on the Web Studio application, you've got to enter a security code. Same thing with the physical HMI. It presents a, a numeric key entry, and you can go in there, and if you have the correct password, you can go in and do some pretty critical, you know, adjust some critical settings and stuff that we don't want just anybody getting into. And here, if I, if I, enter, in, if I enter in a bad password, uh, access is denied. Allows you to cancel back and go to the previous screen. However, if you have the the right password, it takes you to the maintenance screen, and now we have access to uh, some of the, the more um, yeah critical information, advanced maintenance from there. We can do some overrides. Uh, so yeah, there's some great functionality there. I love the, that I was able to implement with the scripting, with the password protection option, and uh, everything actually pretty worked pretty easily. Um, I've been very pleased with the experience so far. As I said, I've only been using it uh, a little over four months, but it's been fun so far, uh, as opposed to the other software that we used previously, which was grueling in many ways. So, so that's how that was our, our needs and how we filled them. Um, you wanted to know about some of the benefits of using Web Studio, and uh, yeah, I can can summarize that for you. Uh, Web Studio let us provide a, a similar look and feel to the interface on the physical touch screen that we had already deployed. So that's an obvious uh, benefit. This one actually probably the benefit that translates best to our customer because they don't have to relearn a, a, another HMI. Uh, even, even if they had another HMI that was functional but had a different form, it would be it would be a little bit of a learning curve for them and they'd have to learn essentially two HMIs. But because Web Studio let us dial in the look so well to really customize it to look like the other one and feel like the other one. I think that's a, a tremendous benefit. Um, we actually do use the thin client. I heard you mention you talked about thin client earlier. And we use the thin client. So as I said, we have an embedded PC in the Max Cooler that's doing the logging and running all the redundant HMI. But um, yeah, it has a monitor attached to it. So if someone wants to take a peek, they can RDP into it. You can do a remote, remote desktop. Or they can do a thin client, uh, which, which is very simple to set up. And they can access the log values, all the graphs. If, if I pull up a graph here, again, there's no real values in here. But if I pulled up a, a graph, and you can pretend to see some useful information there, uh, as you would on an actual Max cooler. But the uh, it's nice to be able to do that through the thin client and keeping that fairly unsophisticated method of, of connecting for uh, most people aren't as techy as those of us who are actually dealing with IndieSoft. But it's nice that they can uh, still get out there and see the data from wherever they're at. If they're at home and they're connected connect through a VPN or if they're you know, on a different building in the facility and they just want to take a peek, they can do that. So we use the, the thin client. And that's nice to have that as a, a remote access feature. And uh, oh, another benefit uh, is that the application, once it's built, we, we just deploy it on uh, you know we on a per license basis. But we get to take our build once, deploy deploy multiple times approach, and that's been great. It's, it's been uh, it's been relatively hassle-free to get the, the licenses and the registrations on those and to be able to deploy multiple times, but all based on the one application that I've built. And probably one thing uh, that I, I, I don't hear talked about often, but I think is pretty valuable information uh, if you're looking to get into Web Studio, just the fact that the file size is so low on these applications. To give you an example, my, my previous built application that provided similar functionality uh, but like I said, the data was hard to get access to. The, the applications for there, if I were to make a change, if I were to update uh, an option on one of the screens, then uh, it would be 140 megabytes that I had to transfer up to, the, to our server online and then download from the embedded PC and install that 
new application, 140 megabytes every time. Well, our upload speed on Office DSL isn't all that great, and uh, you're talking about you know the whole operation how to upload that and that download it and to install it. We're talking about half an hour, 40 minutes maybe. Whereas Web Studio applications, the, our entire application is uh, just over five megabytes. So I can upload that. I can I can email that. Um, it's just really nice to have that low file size. And with Web Studio, there's no there's no installation of an application. So once you've got the the, the framework installed, the the runtime version of the Web Studio application, then the individual applications that you build, they just they pop right in. You just copy it over the folder and then you run it from the runtime uh, edition of Web Studio. And like I said, I'm just over five megabytes. So compared to the 140 that I was looking at before, I can actually upload that and download it and copy it over and start it up in about five minutes. So that's been a big time saver because we're still developing this and there are still our changes to be made. And it's nice to be able to do those and, uh, quickly. It's nice for everybody that we can do those quickly. And just wanted to close with uh, Fabio, you to ask me to consider some future uses for IndieSoft uh, Web Studio. How can we use that in, to maybe grow the, our, our feature base? How can we how can we improve functionality? I would love to be able to provide accessibility to our application for really remote users, like just over over a phone connection or a you know smartphone, being as ubiquitous as they are now. Just some people have an iPhone, some people have an Android, some people have a Windows phone, uh, as I do, and one app doesn't really work on on a wide range of devices. So using and harnessing the HTML5 technology that is our future, that's our future standard, that's, that we're, we're there. Uh, by looking towards HTML5 instead of proprietary apps, but to get the same functionality or you know, the same the same remote control ability, I uh, I really would like to implement that. But I'm sure that's a little over my head as far as as far as actually getting that uh, going. But and I'm not I haven't really been asked to do that. But uh, if I if I was asked for that, I I would uh, it's something I personally would like to be able to, to do with Web Studio just to be able to. It's a nice selling point. I think that you can say, oh look, I can pop in and, you know, just on my phone and see how things are doing at uh, my plant. And uh, I think that's very useful. And uh, we'd like to get that in, you know, initiated at some point. But uh, that's all I've got for you today, Fabio. Thank you very much, Orion. It was excellent. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to prepare the presentation and sharing your experience with us. Uh, thanks again. And uh, with that, <clears throat> we have covered the agenda for the webinar. And uh, if you have specific questions or, or comments, uh, feel free to write them in the Q&A box or even in the chat box. And uh, either myself or Orion will be uh, answering your questions. One question here is better for you, Orion, about the uh, performance to communicate with the PLCs. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit about what kind of communication performance you had between the software studio and the PLCs? That's a great question. I love that question. That's a question that I would ask. Uh, mm -hmm. So important. So, yeah, we're dealing with, right now, we're dealing with the, our limit on our license is 1,500 tags, and we're about 1,350 uh, in the number of tags that we're actually using and pulling from the PLC. So it's quite a few tags, and I'm pretty sure the Ethernet spec allows for all that to go down, but uh, there's block size limitations, so if you're pulling larger than, uh, you're pulling disparate groups of data, so you might have a, some in an address block where 20 addresses are right, right next to each other, but then you're, you skip those and you want to look at another address that's uh, 10 addresses away, you could say 10 discrete addresses away, uh, There there is a delay between the time, this is just inherent to the communication protocols that we use, that they exist. Um, there's a delay time between gathering the first block of data and the second, uh, and any subsequent blocks. 
and because of all the data points that we've got spread out throughout our, the whole PLC, we've got uh, a variety of blocks that we're pulling. But still, and I wanted to comment, I, I'm not going to use names, but the, the other software that we did use, the performance was not as good. And so with Web Studio, uh, to tell you how it works on a real machine with only 1,350 tags, because I think what we care about is real numbers here. Um, I, I usually see, when I, when I click a button, I usually see about a second delay between pressing a button on my Web Studio and seeing it back on the, uh, the physical touch screen. So uh, round trip time, you know, total, total ping time, I guess, would be a, a one full second. But it's a, yeah, about a half second to transmit all those data addresses to and then to read them back on the touch screen. Sometimes it's a little more, maybe a second and a half or two. Sometimes it's almost instantly. Uh, but that's the performances that we've seen. It's, it's about a second delay. Great. Thank you, Brian. Ryan. Uh, another question here. Uh, does the graphical visualization tool set support not regularly equidistant data streams of historical data trained from a SQL database? If understood the question, yes, the data in the in the history uh, in, in the history database does not have to be necessarily saved on the same uh, sampling rate. You could have data, let's say, every second for 10 minutes, <clears throat> and then uh, no data for two minutes, and then data again every uh, 30 seconds for five minutes. So, and Indosoft has the ability to read this data from the database and present this data on the trains, on the grid control, on different objects, uh, regardless of how often this data was saved into the database. And by the way, in order to retrieve data from the database and display this data on the screen, uh, the data does not even need to be saved by Indosoft Web Studio. All we need is the data available in the database and uh, whether it was in the software studio that saved the data or any other system, we have the ability to read this information and show this information on the screen in any uh, dashboard format that you decide to use. So with that, I would like, oh, looks like another question, just just a compliment here, appreciate. So with that, uh, I'd like to provide some contact information for Indosoft and uh, it is available on our website as well. If you have additional questions, feel free to contact us by email, by phone, using the live chat from the website. Uh, we also are very active on the social network, so uh, feel free to follow Indosoft on Facebook, Twitter, uh, we keep uh, sending information, useful technical tricks and tips uh, via Twitter and Facebook as well. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. And uh, having said that, I'd like to thank uh, First Orion for sharing his uh, application with us and uh, sharing it. Thank you very much, Orion. Appreciate it. And uh, thank everybody and every one of you for taking the time to uh, hear this webinar. Uh, we do appreciate your support. Uh, hopefully the information here was uh, useful for you. And I hope to see you again in the next webinar in two weeks or so. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.